ओके रिस्पेक्टेड डायरेक्टर लर्नड फैकल्टी एंड सैंटिस्ट ऑफ दि इंस्टिट्यूट इंक्लूडिंग डॉक्टर शुक्ला शशिकला मैडम एंड सुजाता मैडम हु मैनो एंड ऑल डॉक्टर अनिल सेठी and the previous speaker uh, pandey ji he was uh, in fact uh, one of my um, uh, guides uh, student as well he is now in nausari a very good presentation he had made and uh, much of the anatomical parts have been covered i am also uh, have also specialized in uh, wood anatomy from the far and phd was also uh, in the larger gamut of wood anatomy but today i have been assigned a topic uh, of uh, uh, to speak about how to utilize uh, lesser used materials uh, not only trees but palms also uh, for various end uses so here it goes so before i uh, go to the species uh, you know what are those species uh, i will be talking about and what are the programs that we are having on utilizing those lesser used materials i just uh, want to highlight one point is that you know uh, Uh, those countries with this uh, less amount of uh, per capita forest cover will be under <coughs> tremendous uh, pressure from forest deficit countries so what i mean is uh, those developed and developing countries uh, like uh, even including india and china will be putting lot of pressure on those forest deficit countries uh, including myanmar uh, malaysia papua new guinea and uh, even Uh, you know, uh, south of uh, the equator, uh, that is in Brazil, we are, we are uh, putting pressure also on Papua New Guinea, such countries. So uh, definitely, these countries will be under tremendous pressure from uh, forest deficit countries, and uh, of course, this will depend largely on the economic conditions. And uh, over time, we have been seeing uh, in this graph, you can see there is a decline in. per capita forest cover from 1900s to the present stage uh, obviously it is uh, due to you know the growing population and uh, of course the economic crisis as well and <clears throat> china and india are now the dominant importers of tropical hardwood logs and uh, the the whole trade in prime uh, tropical primary wood and wood products is constant global exports so uh, you can imagine how much pressure these countries are in like for example malaysia papua new guinea then the si islands uh, that's part of the irian jaya belonging to indonesia solomon islands that is i'm what i'm talking about and of course our neighboring country myanmar um, and right now which means a figure uh, is quite old but still india and china Accounts for an 86 total tropical roundwood imports by the ITTO or the International Tropical Timber Organization members, and uh, that, that that is compared with the figure in 1995, which, which was only 22 percent. And right now, China is the leader in uh, hardwood log imports from these forest deficit poor countries, uh, most of them illegally, and they constitute uh, one third of those tropical total log imports. India has a predominant uh, import of uh, tropical hardwood. Uh, roughly half percentage is uh, from the tropical hardwood remaining interestingly is coming now from uh, the developed countries uh, mostly the temperate hardwood and uh, softwoods and there is of course a strong preference for teak uh, in india, imported teak for india and the whole uh, teak industry across the world is india facing now even though we are a leading country as far as teak is con concerned natural teak as especially uh, well uh, So we have to talk about uh, lesser used species, and of course uh, about uh, important species that are getting adulterated. Also, in our uh, in our place, you know, Dalbaji landfill is available in plenty, uh, and uh, that is uh, <clears throat> not allowed to be cut because it's a royal tree, and uh, it it has only to be uh, auctioned in several selected depots. And uh, this is adulterated very often, especially for making uh, furniture and Interestingly, the elephant out of wood from species called Samanya saman, the rain tree. Uh, so that is a kind of adulteration that is happening, but they are not uh, substitutes for uh, the the best timber in the one of the best timbers in the world, the Dalbaji like for the rose wood. The other is of course our LBC adulteration. It is a uh, surface series, as it is called, a color series, or uh, sorry, surface series. And so that that is also a very common uh, timber species, but it's highly usable and it's a good furniture species. Although it doesn't have the the very good appearance of uh, 
rosewood, of course. It can be made to look like rosewood. Well, we have plenty of uh, illegal imports coming into our country without any kind of forest certification. Um, and a case is where Merbo, which is otherwise also called as Quila, and it is uh, uh, scientifically called as uh, uh, the, uh, it is the uh, uh, Insia Baijuga, uh, one of the uh, Merbo is Insia Baijuga. There is obviously a, a resemblance to our uh, common uh, Terracarpus masukium, that is the uh, in our place called Venga, but uh, it is uh, you know the the um, because known well known for the gum it oozes out, and so it is uh, uh, very well known timber Terracarpus masukium. So Marbo is used to adulterate Venga. Uh, so in place or substitute even there is a, it's a because marble is not a poor timber species it's a very good quality timber species and uh, there used to be a time when uh, you know species called as a uh, osiris lanceolata which is called as tanzanian sandal used to come in and we anatomists had to interfere and find out what exactly is that species and it was you know mixed up with the original sandal when cases are caught and uh, it's very difficult to you know take out small specimens from each of these gold chips. And uh, there is a very subtle difference, as you can see, there's the, uh, the presence of crystals or calcium oxalate crystals in the ray parangema, whereas in the sandal, it's in the vertical parangema, you can see the calcium oxalate crystals. That's the only difference you have. And it has a smell also because it belongs to family Centralisi. <clears throat> so today I will be focusing on uh, an area that is right now I'm working on for the last three years under a World Bank aided project uh, funded by the National Higher Education Project and uh, where we'll be talking about the utilization of coconut wood. And why coconut? Because as you can see, uh, you know, so many countries grow coconut. Uh, you know, the leading countries I'll, I'll, I'll be coming to in the uh, couple of slides uh, coming next. Uh, India has a very vast coastline of roughly about 7,500 kilometers, both in the West Coast as well as the East Coast. So plenty of uh, coconut uh, palm wood. In Kerala, we have more than 500 uh, kilometer length of coastal line because the entire state, excepting a few districts, have all coastal lines or uh, seashores in the in the districts. So uh, that's a good opportunity uh, for us. Uh, so that's why I I tell you or uh, take you to this catchword like. Uh, it's a gold mine in waiting, India's coastline. Uh, I'm talking about coconut palm wood, the Cocos nucifera, which can be substituting, which can be used to substitute a, a large variety of timbers. I'll show you next uh, in, the, in the coming slides how this is being done, uh, both experimentally and also transferring the technology to the industries. Uh, so the leading country is uh, right now Philippines, followed by uh, the Indonesia, and there, there is the headquarters of the uh, the International Coconut Community (ICC). Indonesia recently hosted the World Coconut Day with a virtual seminar. We also participated in the virtual mode. India comes third in terms of uh, area as well as production. Uh, uh, our, I mean, production is a little bit ahead of the Indonesian uh, counterpart. And if you look at the states. That's a world figure, 12.29 million hectares of the land area in the world is covered by coconut. And in India, it is uh, about uh, roughly 20% of that 12.29, which comes to 2.14. And out of this 2.14, uh, roughly 37 percentage is in Kerala. But our, our uh, uh, although the area is huge, because this, the, the very word of Kerala comes from Kera. Uh, Kera means coconut. Uh, so, uh, despite the fact that we have a large number of area covered by coconut, uh, we don't have, uh, you know, high productive palms. We have only very tall uh, uh, palms, uh, you know, only in the recent uh, times only people have started cultivating, uh, you know, uh, high yielding and uh, early high yielding uh, palms, which have been uh, uh, done by research work of uh, institutions, including KAU, Kerala Agricultural University. And th this figure, this 20% of the palms in India, senile means that's huge opportunity for us because this timber, uh, this wood, it's a, it's in uh, coats, I can say coconut tree and 
coconut wood the tree and wood is not tree, the true wood or to, true tree because there is no cane bale growth so obviously there is no secondary growth as well so secondary xylem is absent but it is you know uh, protracted primary thickening meristem that gives it the very hard material of course the fiber uh, which uh, which is the, the vascular bundle uh, and the silicized highly silicized uh, vascular bundle gives it the typical hardness of a palm wood here is an interesting figure. Uh, you can see that uh, the unlike most uh, tropical trees or uh, gymnosperms, where the best wood will be in the center, it is just the reverse in monopods, especially the palm. You find the best timber in the, the outer part, the periphery, and also in the lower part, say up to 15 meter only, in tall senile palms. I'm talking about very tall palms that usually grows in the coastal areas. Uh, its density is very high, as you can see, it's more than uh, 600, which is quite enough for to be used as timber. So it looks very dark, so you can see the samples taken out from there. And there is the inner core part, which is very soft and very uh, less dense material. These small dots are actually vascular bundles, uh, and uh, they are highly silicized, but the number comes, uh, reduces as we go to the inside. And... Uh, uh, so this is how it is, uh, just the reverse for uh, hardwoods and gymnosperms. When it comes to monocot, the best wood is in the periphery. So that is only the, the problem with that is that you get the best wood only in the periphery and the quantity of good wood will be less. But we have put the inner core part to different end uses that is actually waste utilization or value addition as you can call it. Uh, well, uh, we, we should not be talking low about coconut wood anymore because it's very obvious from this figure. Uh, some of the best uh, uh, timber species in our area compares very well. In fact, most of the uh, strength properties are much better than the best woods. You can see even uh, uh, above Xylea xylocarpa even. But of course, it is uh, the outer hard, uh, we call as the dermal wood of the coconut, which we are comparing with the other timber species. Uh, the the maximum uh, compressive stress also is uh, very high. So is MOE and MOR. Uh, so that's good uh, news for uh, many of the wood scientists who are who may be interested in uh, coconut wood. There's a comparison between one of the most popular timber species in Kerala as well as in India, teak at teak versus coconut. As you can see from the figure, of course, here again, coconut palm wood is the dermal wood, the, the high density material that we are talking about. Uh, we have all values going higher. Even if you look at the T by R, the transition by uh, radial uh, ratio, it is low compared to. So that is an indicator, you know, the shrinkage and uh, uh, the transition shrinkage and radial shrinkage ratios should be uh, minimal uh, for a timber to qualify as a good uh, good wood for uh, structural uses. <clears throat> 